Hey everyone, so I'm going to present our project, Diffusion Illusions. I'm a student from Stony Brook, and uh, that picture on the left, that's me. So you might see a picture of a dog here, but what you might not have known is that this dog is secretly a sloth. This girl holding her hands together on the left, or this giraffe on the right. Well, her hands are actually her head, and the giraffe was actually a penguin the whole time. We use stable diffusion to generate optical illusions, and we don't use any training. So we have a few different types. We have flip illusions, which is the type that you saw earlier, where a picture will turn upside down, and it will either stay as the same type of picture or turn into an entirely different prompt. We also have twisting square illusions, where we take an image and we slice it into a bunch of pieces and connect them with a bunch of hinges. And when we rearrange it, we can get a different prompt. And we also have transparent overlay illusions, pieces of plastic that have some ink printed on them. Something very suspicious about these four pictures is that when you put them together, you get a picture of a cat. And the last type is rotation overlays, where we have two transparent sheets, one of which is the base, and the other one rotates on top of it to yield four different images from two pieces of plastic. Of course, all of these can be made physically. And we're actually going to have a demo session right after, so come to the poster. We have a billion examples on this website and live demo after the talk, so go and visit. So our definition for our types of illusions are that we have a set of images that gets rearranged to turn into another set of images. The original set of images, you know, the ones that we physically make, are called prime images. And one of them might be, for example, that dog. That might be the prime image. And when we turn it upside down, we can get a derived image, such as a sloth. And we talk about these in terms of arrangements. So here's an example. The base and the overlay. Hatsune Miku turns into an elf, turns into some woman in the winter, turns into Emma Watson. And we call these two images the prime images because they are used to derive the other images by rearranging them. So P1 and P2 are the primes. And different arrangements, different rotations on the top, A1 through 4, get turned into four different derived images. Hidden overlays, four pictures that should hopefully be fairly innocent looking on, the, on their own, can be stacked together to turn into secret image the derived image number five. But in this case, the first four primes are actually the derived images. We have four prime images that turn into five derived images. To simulate these overlays, we actually use multiplication channel-wise, like uh, Photoshop's multiply blend mode. And we find this approximates real photos pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. The twisting squares, we slice an image into tiles, and the arrangement is that we turn every uh, even tile 90 degrees and every odd tile the other direction. And again, these can be 3D printed. And the last type, the flip illusion. We take one prime image and it turns into two derived images. One is just leaving it alone and the other is we flip it upside down. So how do we make these? We have a two-phase process where we optimize the prime images. So this was the previous definition before, but the goal is to optimize the primes so that the derived images match a set of text prompts. So if we have a set of text prompts like cow, dog, or cat, we use score distillation loss, or our dream target loss, to optimize the primes so that these derived images, after arranging them, turn into their respective prompts. So to do this, the first step was score distillation loss. You may be familiar with this because it was first introduced in Dream Fusion. But we're not making 3D models here. We're optimizing images. So we might take some image. This is how score distillation work, loss works. We take an image, and we add some random noise to it. And then we have a noisy image. Then given some text prompt, we use stable diffusion to predict that noise. And the difference between these two noises is the gradient that we pass to our image to optimize it. As we use score distillation loss, this optimizable image will begin to approach its text prompt. But if we do this naively on a bunch of pixels using stable diffusion, we actually get a bunch of problems because we have to pass the gradient through the encoder, and that results in a bunch of adversarial artifacts. So instead, we parameterize these images using Fourier feature networks, where we have an MLP that takes x and y as an input, and in the end generates colors as an output. It's just another way to represent an image. An image is a function of x and y to color. 
And so when we optimize using score distillation loss over the Fourier feature networks, we can get reasonable images even when we use a latent diffusion model. And so what if we were to add two losses with two prompts? Flip one upside down and keep the other one right side up before we pass the gradient. Uh, well, now we can create flipping illusions where we have the giraffe on the left and the penguin on the right, corresponding to their uh, respective text prompts, where this is the prime and both of these are the derived images. And with rotation overlays, it's the same idea, but now we, uh, the differentiable process is that we multiply these together at different rotations to derive the images on the top, given these two prime images on the bottom. So score distillation loss worked pretty well, but it does have some undesirable side effects. Like this looks fairly noisy, and I'd like it to be smooth. So how can we fix this? We introduced something called dream target loss to do that. So here's an example of a, a hidden overlay illusion where these first four Mikus are overlaid to create a Picard. And they're good, they look nice, but they have noisy artifacts on them. If you were just to take SD edit and bring them more towards that prompt by adding some noise and then denoising it using a diffusion model, we can get cleaner images for each one. But the problem is that these no longer satisfy that prime-derived relationship. These four multiplied together do not equal Picard, whereas these four do. So what do we do? We optimize the four prime images so that they'll try to match these dream targets that we got from SD Edit as close as possible. And that makes it a lot smoother and gives more detail. Creating overlay illusions is actually very cheap. All you need is a laser printer and a hunk of plastic, but you can buy a pack of 100 on Amazon. If you remember those old overlay projectors, uh, that overhead projectors you might have seen in middle school. They still sell those. But it doesn't always work. Failure cases for the hidden illusions, for example, um, include where you can see that hidden image inside the other four images. So the target here was to create a plant when we overlay these four images on top of each other. But it turns out we can see the plant inside of the dog and on the table here, which we're not supposed to see. It doesn't work all the time, but it works well enough to create a bunch of them. And of course, we do some quantitative evaluation where we may create a confusion matrix for these uh, derived images over here, where the plane was basically unrecognizable, this one was just completely black, and this one was a plant. But most of the time it works well. These were specifically selected as failure cases. You can see that this diagonal matrix over here means that most of the time, GPT-4 will recognize the target prompt as what we actually wanted it to be. So, illusions have been around for a very long time. We're not the first to generate optical illusions in general, going back all the way to the 1500s. As a matter of fact, we actually have an overview of a whole bunch of different kinds of illusions throughout history in our paper. One particular one that's interesting is one that actually came after our paper, called Visual Anagrams. And they attempt to do something fairly similar, where if you flip this giraffe upside down, we can get a penguin. Um, so theirs came after ours, and it's pretty interesting, but it can't do overlay illusions. That's out of the scope of their algorithm. And so what's the takeaway? Well, diffusion models can generate optical illusions. And we hope to have more inspiration for people to work in this area. And actually, it's literally a takeaway, because I'm going to be giving these away to anybody who comes to my stand afterwards. Thank you to all my lab mates, and thank you to people at iLine Studios, especially Paul, who encouraged me to submit this paper in the first place. Please go to diffusionillusions.com, and you can see tons more examples. Thank you.